Stop, stop, stop. He is smoking. It's the sound of failure. Time to, uh... Time to quit. This ATV has been sitting broken in my neighbor's barn for the last six years. Two mechanics have completely given up on it. I know nothing about these things, but I've always wanted an ATV. So let's see if I'm stubborn enough to fix it. The other day I was wandering around in my neighbor's barn and I saw this thing sitting there and I offered him a pack of Coors Light in trade for it and much to my happiness, he accepted. The former owner told me that this thing needed a couple things. I mean, first and foremost, there's no battery where there should be a battery. The solenoid needed to be replaced and the only reason I even know what a solenoid is because we just replaced it on my 1953 Chevy. He showed me how it worked, he showed me what it did, and now I'm gonna see if I can take what we learned on that truck project and put it into this ATV project. This thing needs a new carburetor, so I went and bought one. Now I have to take it apart and figure out where all those things go, and it will be miraculous if it just starts up at that point, but hey. I believe in miracles. Okay, I've got the battery that I've ordered right here, but I already, encountered a bit of a phenomenon. This is the electrolyte. Oh, this is the battery fluid. So apparently it's not even in here yet. Oh, hello. Okay, but let's not disrupt the battery acid flow. Thank you so much. Ooh, it's warm for some reason. Installed. We want to put some fuel stabilizer in there because she's been a sitting. Just checking to make sure that's not diesel. <laughs> so here's the old solenoid. Oh yeah. Okay. I see. I see. So this little thing here comes out. And then goes in right here. I just replaced the solenoid and the battery and now I'm going to see if it will turn on. I know already that I need to replace the carburetor but I want to just see what I have going for me right now first. Kind of works. Okay, now we're gonna put in the carb. Here's the new carburetor. Now we just need to find the thing that looks like this inside there. The initial excitement kind of plummeted when I hit my first hiccup with this project, which was that I knew I needed to work on the carburetor, but I couldn't figure out how to get the gas tank off. And then was further compounded by the fact that I couldn't figure out how to take this thing out of park. And so I couldn't even push it inside to work on it. Those may seem like pretty small hiccups to completely kill all motivation for a project like this. But I think it was about that time that I realized my neighbor Caleb, who is a full-time mechanic, couldn't fix this thing, though he'd tried several times. And so who was I to think that I would be able to? So I kind of just forgot about it for several weeks and it just sat up here. And then I found out that my friend Jason, who is also a mechanic, was coming into town and he offered to take a look at it, which restored at least a little bit of hope that we might be able to get this thing running again. What are you for? What's that? There's a little cable out here that's sticking out here. It's like not plugged in. <laughs> Jason and I installed a new carburetor on this thing and I was sure that was going to just do the trick. Oh, there it is. It goes back and then you push it down. Naturally. Because that was clearly- All right, that's probably enough, hey? Described in the instructions. But the moment that the solenoid caught on fire, Jason said, all right, I'm going to bed. Whoa, stop, stop, stop. It is smoking. It's the sound of failure. Time to- uh... Time to quit. And that was mechanic number two giving up on this project. An unfulfilled childhood dream of having my own go-kart kind of led to a obsession as an adult with little vehicles and tinkering. I traded a drill press for a go-kart. I found a 
bicycle and a power washer in the trash and converted them into a mini bike. I traded my farm truck from Seattle for a golf cart here in Tennessee. Even messing around with all those small vehicles, I still really had no idea what I was doing but when my golf cart broke down for the first time for real, and I had no choice but to fix it because I couldn't live on this farm without a functioning farm vehicle, actually being able to fix it and being able to figure out how to make it work gave me the dumb confidence to then tried to make the ATV work as well. My neighbor Caleb had told me that there was major carburetor issues with this bike and that's exactly why Jason and I replaced the carburetor, but that's also why replacing it and then still not having it work was so discouraging because if two mechanics had given a go at this thing and couldn't fix it, then what the heck was I going to be able to do that they couldn't? especially because I didn't even really know how carburetors worked or what was supposed to be happening. So that just kind of killed my motivation once again for this project and it, there it sat. But then I was on my hillside working on my orchard project using my leaf blower to add air to the bonfire that I was trying to light and suddenly something just went like click or maybe a ping in my brain and I came in here and grabbed the old carburetor off of this bike and somehow my understanding about fire and air in a completely different context just made this make sense to me. So when Jason and I hooked this up, I realized that the throttle cable, this thing right here, uh, basically controls this little thing right here, which when this rotates, this valve opens and this valve goes right to the air filter. So sure enough, when this is wide open, air's flowing right through there. And then when we hooked up the fuel lines, I realized the gas starts to pull down here. So if you're pushing the throttle cable down, there's tons of gas going into it, and then there's tons of air. So just like on the bonfire, when you've got a ton of fuel and a ton of air, it burns really brightly. And so it then follows that this is what makes your engine roar and go really fast. So what the leaf blower and the bonfire helped me realize was that if I'm pushing the throttle and the thing just dies, well, it's definitely getting enough air, so it must be missing the only other thing that an engine needs to run, which is gas. And that's pretty much where we are right now, is that I need to figure out what's going on with the gas. That light bulb moment that I had with my leaf blower about this carburetor sent me on a huge rabbit trail about how carburetors actually work. There's probably a lot of people just like me that don't actually know how some of the things that they use on a daily basis actually work. So I collected that information, I put it on my Squarespace website. Squarespace has been a huge supporter of my channel for the last three years, but I've been hosting my website there for the last five. And as little as I know about mechanics, I know even less about technology. And so it was super important for me to have something that was very user friendly, where I could literally just drag and drop things into a beautiful artist design template and have it presented to the world in a way that makes sense and looks good. The coolest thing that I found in my research about carburetors is this series of videos that Chevrolet made as advertisements back in the 40s and 50s about how to fix their cars because back then being able to fix your own stuff was actually a selling point. And I put those videos on my Squarespace website and you can just click them and play them right there. If you're interested in starting your own website to showcase your small business or to just put some thoughts out in the world, go to squarespace.com to get it set up. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Anne of All Trades and you'll get a 10% discount. The single thing that's helped me more than anything else on this project is a YouTube video that I found about this exact ATV that literally just kind of shows what parts are what and what they do. The reason that was so helpful is because it showed me this knob, which allows you to turn off the fuel from the gas tank into the fuel line so that I can mess around with that. So with that gas line off, we can pull the fuel line out. Whoops. Well, oh gosh. Oh no, why? Okay, well. Apparently you have to turn it just part way, not fully. I wanted to show the old fuel filter, but I seem to have dropped it and I can't find it. But it wasn't see-through and that created a huge problem because I wasn't able to see whether there was gas getting into the carburetor. And now you can clearly see that there is gas in this. And um, hopefully if I can get this reattached without causing any further harm, uh, 
we can also see it working. These little clamps are a little tricky, but they're kind of fun. So now, just tuck that little guy back. Oh no, there's gas everywhere. Whoopsie. In theory now, with this reinstalled, there is enough gas that's gonna go into the carburetor bulb. And so it should at least, you know, if, if gas is the issue, then it should start. And I actually did get another air filter and oil filter. Um, and even with the carburetor, they're all aftermarket parts. So I'm in this thing less than $100. So even if it doesn't start, I feel like I've gotten $100 worth of lessons, but I really, I would really like it to start. Come on. Cowgy. Come on. Ugh. No way. No way! Let's go! Oh my gosh. Hey, it works! I wonder how safe it is to drive this thing in this state. Ah. I'm sure it's gonna be great. Oh my gosh. So the lesson from this video is that patience and perseverance definitely pays off. But also sometimes the solution for our problems is somewhere completely other than where we were originally looking. If you wanna see other trash I turned into treasure, go check out my power washer into mini bike project. I will see you in that video. Cheers.